chamfer, no chamfer, lots of chamfer tests. Uh, looking at how it does on the amp press versus how it does on target. Uh, so a couple things. First, I thought you guys would like to see what my, at least for the purposes of this test, was no chamfer, light chamfer, and heavy chamfer. So this is the uh, no chamfer, and you can see uh, here in a couple pictures. Um, I'll go back. So you can see here, these are no chamfer. And it doesn't mean there isn't a little bit of belling on the, on the mouth uh, itself. Uh, these have been chamfered in the past. They've just been shot a couple times with no chamfering done to them. Uh, coincidentally, uh, also no trimming of any kind. So these are strictly shot, tumbled, and then sized uh, with nothing else being done to them. Uh, other than all of these did have like a nylon brush run through the necks just a little bit. Uh, but as far as the actual uh, mouth goes, nothing was done. Uh, let's move on to light chamfering. So this is what the light chamfering looks like in my particular test here. There's a little bit better picture of it. And you can see, uh, you know, it's still, a, you know, a little bit of an, an edge. Now, uh, on the top of the edge, there is a flat spot. So it is not a knife's edge, uh, even though it's sort of what it looks like. There is a flat spot um, on the top. Uh, but uh, it is basically an inside bevel, an outside bevel, and it is very light. And then we have the heavy, and this is what the heavy is going to look like. And um, you can see here lots of inside bevel going on. And uh, the, the camera makes it look a little distorted, but trust me, these are perfectly round mouths. Uh, and they were all put through an expander mandrel. So uh, let's take a look at what the actual ant press data looks like along with lab radar and on target results. Get into this, you know, keep in mind, this does not mean it's gonna work for you or for anybody else. This is, you know, the data that I'm coming up with, um, you know, stuff happens, you get bad loads, bad days. Um, testing takes a long time. You don't shoot once and get an answer. You, you often shoot like I did at the 100 yard line. You see something that sort of steers you in a direction that you want to test further. And so you do it. Um, you're going to test, you're going to validate, and, and you're going to make sure that it is a repeatable condition. Uh, so here is the no chamfer. And these are all shot at 1,000 yards at a single point of aim. So in this case, I was aiming uh, pretty much dead center on all the targets you're going to see. And then depending on conditions that are out there, um, you know, there was a little bit of variable going on, but, um, you know, pretty much single point of aim on these. Uh, now, I did screw up on my second string here, this number six, which is this one right here. Um, I forgot to turn on my lab radar for the first three shots. So even though I didn't do it, I still put the data up here. But obviously, that's why you have such a low ES and um, standard deviation, because they were only one uh, feet per second apart from each other. Uh, but here is the first string that I shot, and uh, these were uh, all shot, uh, you know, in the same conditions, like I said. So um, temperature-wise, I made sure the barrel cooled between each string and, you know, same temperature, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we're looking at an extreme thread of 14, standard deviation of 5.9. And, you know, obviously the no chamfer did not perform all that well uh, on this particular test. So... Uh, you can see quite a bit of vertical here. This is about eight inches uh, of vertical. Uh, this is also about eight or nine inches of vertical. Uh, pretty narrow on the horizontal, you know, that's not horrible. This one's a little wider, uh, but overall not great results. Also interesting that I did not get similar results on my amp press as I did the first time. So with the no chamfer originally, there was a little bit smoother curve and not as much hump right here on the initial pressure. So it is something that's kind of interesting because everything was prepped the exact same way. Uh, so again, the you know, I just time to do more testing. But uh, this is what no chamfer looked like. Now, if you look up here, this is the pressure really, really tight uh, group here. So it, because it auto scales, this looks like a wide group up here. But really, if you look, uh, it goes from 43 to 49, and even that 49 is, a, you know, this one that's the outlier. Really, 43 to 46 is pretty much where all of these were at. So really, really nice, narrow numbers. So it tells me that a lot of my brass prep is good. 
what I'm still working on is what is uh, definitively causing this hump right there. So let's go to light chamfer. Here is the lightly chamfered. Uh, let's start with the pressures up here first. So final seating pressures, uh, just a little bit lighter overall, even though it had a couple of spikes, but you can see we were down uh, as low as 38.2. Uh, and then in the low 40s uh, with, again, you know, a 45.8 and then a 52.7. So a couple that were a little higher, uh, a little bit more pronounced hump and then dip. So with the light chamfer, you did notice that uh, even though there was this dip, there uh, this rise, there wasn't as much of a dip. But this one here, you can definitely see a little more dip and then it takes off. You know, um, I, I was honestly a little surprised because this, you know, was not exact, but definitely was closer to the unchamfered uh, chart than the last time I did the test. Uh, velocity wise, uh, you know, you're looking ES of 16 and 17 respectively on the two strings and 6.3, 7.1. So both very, very close. And these numbers are in line with what the no chamfer was. So that's good. Uh, again, though, a little bit of vertical. This is a little bit smaller. This is, uh, you know, probably looking about seven inches. Uh, this one here is probably again about seven or eight inches. So just a slightly shorter vertical. But again, same thing, which is really interesting. Uh, and it could just be a condition of wind, but very narrow horizontal here and a little bit wider horizontal over here. So, uh, you know, honestly, between no chamfer and light chamfer on this particular test, I'm going to say honestly, no discernible difference uh, across the board. So let's go to heavy chamfer and see what happened. And this is the heavy chamfer. Now, heavy chamfer, uh, you know, didn't do too bad on the last test I did, but uh, definitely, you know, was not as good as the unchamfered when it came to that particular test. But if we look here, again, really consistent ESs, really consistent SDs, you know, all the numbers are right in there with each other. So, you know, it tells me the ammo is good. Pressure's really uh, consistent again, really nice range right here. Definitely a larger hump. Now, I did read something interesting today because there's been a lot of talk on the internet about the press and, and this particular test and stuff. And one of the uh, things that people have said, which really makes sense, is that the taller the hump, the more surface area you are initially contacting between the bullet and the case mouth. So if you have a very steep, deep chamfer such as this one, you have a lot more bearing surface that is actually contacting that chamfer first, or not even bearing surface, but bullet surface, uh, that is contacting that bevel uh, over a larger area, which is more friction, which would definitely drive this spike up. Uh, but unlike the light chamfer, it just, it, it spikes and then it comes and then it just takes right off. It doesn't really come down and go low down uh, like the like the light chamfer did. So it's just kind of this getting through that initial pressure and then whoop, it's off. Little bit wider in the pressures, but still really good. I mean, higher, uh, again, I'm gonna have to say that's probably some of the surface area uh, that people have been talking about. Uh, everything here is in the low 40s to low 50s, so about a 10, 10 pound difference. Uh, but on target, definitely better. You know, you look at this group, Really, really nice, um, you know, for the test that I was doing. And even this one overall, this is only maybe six inches uh, total uh, group height. And they both have about the same uh, windage on them as far as that goes. But what this is showing me is that between uh, the two different groups that I shot, uh, keeping in mind that uh, if you haven't noticed, I shot uh, no uh, no chamfer, then light chamfer, then heavy chamfer, then went and did five more at none, light, and heavy uh, so that everything had a chance to shoot under different conditions uh, so that it was a little bit more of a fair test. But for shooting in two different times, this is a very, um, very repeatable looking group. Now, obviously, this needs to get tuned up a little bit. Uh, this was not by any means a, a, a load that was, you know, perfectly dialed in or anything. And, and now in some ways, I intentionally did that so that uh, we could see what just in uh, sort of an any load, like this is kind of a thrown together load, uh, what it would do because uh, kind of an any load is going to have an even more profound uh, variance depending on how you're shooting. So uh, for this particular test, I thought this was great. Now what I'll probably do is 
Uh, I've got a new barrel that I just threw on. I've got a little bit of um, blow off to do with it. And then I'll start doing load development. And then I will redo this test again with a, a tuned load. And that way I've got kind of a baseline to test it against to see how we repeat ourselves. But as far as what I've gotten out of this one particular test, is that uh, you know without a doubt and not really a surprise to anybody, some kind of chamfer is probably still going to be the answer. I, I I don't think I've ever advocated for removing it. I was just simply really fascinated by the fact that the no trimmer chamfer was shooting better in the in the beginning and definitely had a better chart. But the more I'm doing this, the more I'm seeing the charts move around, the more I'm seeing the groups and the speeds. Uh, this is telling me that uh, this is a function of tuning my chamfer and so it may not be as simple as oh a little bit of light chamfer heavy chamfer i'm actually going to start playing around with moving the blade on the gerode trimmer that i have to in fact induce a shorter uh, uh a shorter chamfer that has more angle to it and then a deeper one uh that is a little is a little different so uh we're gonna see how this all goes and uh you know Stay tuned. Uh, I'm having fun with the testing. I realize people have different opinions about it, but uh, I'm doing the best I can. I'm still on limited components and uh, trying to do as much testing as I can so that you guys can have some fun watching these videos and try to learn something. So you guys have a good one. We'll